Hello world! Here we're going to learn how to automate filling out forms. The reason I picked this as a task to apply automation to is that it's a common task that people do in a lot of different work settings. For example, you work in a machine shop and you need to input some parameters into some software to set up a machine. The software might look something like this. Now normally, a user who's setting up the machine, he might be going back and forth between the software that he's setting up and a spreadsheet he's getting the values from. So what he might do is he'll say, oh, okay, here's this value. I'll put it in here. And I saw the shutter delay was like 0 0.01. Yep, and the gas pressure, 15. And he'll go on like this until the form is all filled out. Now, wouldn't it be a lot easier just to have a uh, magic robot that would do this work for us? Of course. So, I'm just going to show you something right here. I'm just going to hit Control J. And as you saw, the values just filled themselves out. There was no need to go back and forth between a spreadsheet with our table of values and fill things out one at a time. The best part? You know the work is right. There isn't any mistakes. You don't have to worry about breaking anything. All right, so the question is, how are we going to go about setting something up like this? Looks kind of complicated, right? Actually, it's not going to be that bad. This is how we're going to go about it. The first thing that we need to do is we need to download some software to make this possible. So open your web browser and go to the website autohotkey.com. To download, click the green download button. Click Auto Hotkey Installer. Then click Save. Click Run. Click Yes. Now click Express Installation. And then click Exit. If everything went well, you should be able to find the software under the Recently Installed section of the Windows Start menu. Now that we've installed the software, we need to figure out how to make it be our little robot. Lucky for us, all the notes that we need are found in here. In my opinion, it's not exactly obvious to everyone on where you would actually start. Keep in mind that when I say robot, I really mean script. So I'm going to lay this out in four steps. First, we must find out how we are going to even start the script. Once we know where to start, we need to figure out how to design this thing. Next, we need to turn this thing on. Now for my favorite part, we're going to get our little robot to do our work for us. Okay, so we're currently on step one we need to set up a script. And look at this, it says create a script file. Let's take a look at this. And it shows us all the steps you need to set up your first script file. Okay, so I'm just gonna run through it. You know where to go to read it. So right click on the desktop, just like it said. Click new. Click Auto Hotkey Script. You can call it whatever you want. And now that we set up a script, we're on to step two. So right click on the file, click Edit Script. Now it's time to design our script. Now the first thing that we need to get our script to do is we need it to have some way of being activated. So as you saw very early on in the video, I would hit the control and the J key to actually make things happen. So how do you do that? Well, we're gonna go back to our notes 
And hey, what is this down here? Okay, so it says that if we input this symbol here, you know, they give an example up here, that's how you set it up for activating by the user hitting Control J. So we're going to paste that in. Go to our script. All right. Let's give this a, a test. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to close this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to hit compile script. And look at this. This is a finished robot right here. Let's run it. So I just double clicked on it. And here it is, it's running. So what happens if I just type or hit control J? And look at that, my first script. So again, if I open up actual notepad, You'll see it always does the same thing when I hit Control J. My first script. Now the question is, how do we take a script that can only do this when the user hits the Control and the J keys at the same time, and turn it into a script that puts the correct numbers into each box? Okay, first things first. I'm just going to get rid of this here. Okay, I'm going to click on our script, then I'm going to right click on it, I click on edit script, and instead of having the text of my first script, let's take the number 16, put it in. Okay, I'm going to save that, we'll get out of here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it again, that's how I got there. Compile script. Ah, uh, I bet you it's because the script is still running in the background. So let's stop it. Yeah, see here it's still running. So I'm going to right click on it and then click exit. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, compile script. No problem. Let's start up our robot again. And I'm going to click on this box. Now let's see what happens when we hit the control and the J key. Ah, oh, look at that, 16. Now we need to get numbers into the other boxes. Lucky for us, auto hot keys is capable of pressing your computer's tab key. Usually when you see a form, you can switch from one box to the next by pressing the tab key like so. Now it's time to look up how to get auto hotkey to press the tab button on the keyboard. Let's go back to the auto hotkey notes and see if we can find that information. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top. Okay, I'm going to click on sending keystrokes. see what's here. Oh, look at this. Send tab down. We also have tab up. I'm going to give that a shot. So I'm going to copy and paste this. So it'll copy. edit the script and I'm going to paste that in. Delete that. I'm going to save this. Now I learned my lesson last time. Get 
get rid of this. We'll compile and run. Okay, let's start at the beginning. I'm gonna hit the Control and the J key. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh, look at that. Not only did we get the 16, it switched over to the next box. Now one thing to keep in mind is that you have no guarantee when pressing the tab button what the order of these boxes are. So you need to map it out. You start with the first box. Okay, so we now know this will be the second box always when pressing tab. We now know this will be the third box. Press tab again. Okay, so this will be the fourth box. I'm going to press tab again. Okay, so the gas pressure box is box number five. Okay, and the Z focus box is box number six. Okay, so X focus is box number seven. And the Y focus box is box number eight. Now, sometimes it could be a weird order. You know, it could have gone, you know, from box one here, could have gone to directly to box eight, and then over to here, and then to here. It could have been some sort of weird pattern. Good idea is to actually, you know, do a print screen and draw it out. Now, in case you were wondering what I meant by drawing it out, I just meant, you know, doing a print screen, putting it into paint, and then drawing out the path. So we went this way. There we go. So now we remember exactly which box came first, which one came second, third, and so on. Okay, so now that we know how the tabbing works and the order of these boxes, what we're going to do is we're going to do some edits to our script. So right click, edit script, Okay, I know after this tab, we will be in this box. So I want a 14 to go there. And then I want to be able to tab to the next box, which as we remember was this one. So type in send. Okay, so as you know, this tab here should send us to this box. Back to a zero one. All right, save it. Exit. Make sure there's nothing. Nope, it's running in the background. I gotta exit. Now I gotta make sure I compile. Rerun it. Okay, let's see. Control J. Oh, look at that. We're definitely on to something now. Now, things can get a little confusing if you're typing in too many lines. It's good to comment it out. So, how to do comments? It's just like so, just a uh, colon. And then I would just write in cut speed standard cut speed small radii. Now, if somebody comes back to do changes, they can just look at it and go, oh, this right here is for this box. And these comments will have zero effect on the actual code. Okay, so I'm going to type out the rest of this. And we'll be back to what I had earlier. I'm just going to cheat by pasting it in. And save. It. 
Oops, can't compile it yet. Exit. Now we can compile. Get it running again. Okay, let's see what happens. And there is something wrong. Off by one. Most likely I missed one of the parameters. Ah, it was the pierce delay that I forgot. It's a good thing I put these comments into the script. It makes it easier to troubleshoot. So you need to be really careful. Or it will be all wrong. As you can see, these numbers are not right. They happen to be in the wrong place. That is the risky thing with send keys, so you still have to double check your work. Okay, so pierce delay, send. Okay, save that. Get out of there. I gotta delete all this. Because we did nothing to delete anything that's already there, so, okay, exit, click compile, then activate our script by double clicking on it, if we go back to the spreadsheet that we were looking at earlier, you will have noticed that it's a possibility that the user may want the script to be able to input different sets of values. So as you can see here, here's the set of values that we had the script input for us. But what if the user wants to do this set of values? Let's see what auto hotkeys has for us. Multiple hotkeys per file. Check that out. Oh, look at that. Here's an example of where they've done just that. They had different shortcuts they had used with the script in the middle. So we can do that. We're going to edit our script, make that type of change. Say next time we should use Control K. So I'll just copy what we did here. We essentially want the same thing. Why type it out all over again? Change this to a K. So now in our file, we have two choices. We can use Control J or do something else with Control K. So we just need to make the changes as per the spreadsheet. So 0 0.6 and 4.5. Now before we compile, we must kill anything running in the background. I recompile it. Run it in the background. There it is. Our control J still works just like before, but now we also have the option of hitting control K. The script can now fill out a form differently depending on what set of key combinations are pressed. This takes us to the end of our tutorial. And if you found it useful, please click the like button. Goodbye.